Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to have you with us today as we have a very special show with a very special guest, Dr. Kelly Brogan. We offer so many different ways to help you guys with your journey back to peace and calm, so I hope you are taking advantage of everything we offer over at anxietycoachespodcast.com. If you have a question you would like to have answered on the air, send it to Anxiety Coaches Podcast at gmail.com. Before we start today's show with Dr. Brogan, I am excited to give a shout out to Michelle and a shout out to Sally. They are both our most recent patrons on Patreon. You guys are rock stars, and I thank you so much for supporting the show. You're awesome, and you are now super members of the tribe. Okay, now let's get on to the show. Welcome, Dr. Kelly Brogan to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I am so thrilled to have you. How are you today? Oh, I'm so delighted to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, I thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule um, because this audience that I talk to twice a week is really going to benefit from your wisdom. So, I was hoping that right away we could get into talking about the importance um, about uh, calming our our anxious, panicked uh, nervous system. But first, before I get into that, and I'll give you a second to collect your thoughts about it, I'm going to tell everyone just a little bit about you. Dr. Kelly Brogan is a Manhattan-based holistic women's health psychiatrist. She's the author of the New York Times best-selling book, A Mind of Your Own, and the co-editor of the landmark textbook, Integrative Therapies for Depression. She completed her psychiatric training and fellowship at NYU Medical Center after graduating from Cornell University Medical College, and she has a BS from MIT in Systems Neuroscience. She is a board, she's board certified in psychiatry, psychosomatic medicine, and integrative holistic medicine, and is specialized in a root cause resolution approach to psychiatric, psychiatric syndromes and symptoms. She's on the board of numerous, numerous organizations, and she is the medical director for Fearless Parent and a founding member of Health Freedom Action. She's a certified KRI Kundalini yoga teacher, and she's the mother of two. Kelly, Kelly, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you again. So let's talk about... Um, you know, the anxious person, when I talk about it, I use the term anxiety dash panic, uh, anxiety panic, because we all have yes. normal anxiety in our lives. And I'm not yes. talking about that. So you know what I'm talking about, then that yes. loop that you get stuck in. And a lot of people take a lot of different routes into to trying to find their way out of it. And what I try to talk about here is the benefit of lifestyle changes, including uh, diet, nutrition, and um, sleep, you know, the whole laundry list. And I was hoping that you could talk to us about why it's important to look at that route versus immediately going to medications. So we're at this really funny crossroads in our understanding of health and the human experience, because we've been really indoctrinated into a belief system that really up until quite recently, I think most of us have accepted as the only legitimate understanding, right? And that belief system essentially says, some of us were dealt a bad hand. You know, some of us were born with genetic vulnerabilities, and we have now, unfortunately, to deal with our chemical imbalances uh, for the rest of our lives. And that model really doesn't make any allowances for the significance of pretty much any lifestyle factors at all, from, you know, the home that you live in to your romantic partner to your job let alone your diet, really none of those things are quite as relevant as what you were born with, what, you know, the chemicals are doing at this given moment in time in your head. And the fact 
is that, you know, through that perspective, there's really only one responsible course of action. And that responsible course of action is medication, right? So to chemically manage your chemical imbalance. And, you know, what's so amazing to me is that I, you know, my, um, my own personal transformation, my professional transformation, and my advocacies are really riding a wave like a zeitgeist of growing awareness around a very different kind of story. And this other story essentially says, well, hold on a minute. There's got to be a why here, right? There's got to be some reason that is meaningful to you that you are struggling in the particular way that you're struggling. And so what I have, you know, (laughs) developed such passion around is the opportunity that your illness and struggle presents you. And that often, I think, you know, to, to people has always, I don't know, tended to sound like some, like mental masturbation or something like (laughs) some luxurious indulgence of somebody who's like really not struggling that much. But the truth is the more that you are struggling, my most desperate patients, my suicidal patients, my psychotic patients, my patients who are on the verge of giving up completely are the ones who move through a birth canal into a new version of their life, a new experience of themselves that they never, ever thought was possible. Those are the cases that are the most profound in my, you know, in my practice. So I know it to be uh, true that there are really no carve outs for who should take the um, real opportunity to investigate what your symptoms are presenting to you, right? Because what we are calling anxiety uh, today, and I've come to really, you know, uh, like lose patience with these psychiatric terms, right? Because right. they mean very different things to very different, you know, to all sorts of different people. But what we're calling anxiety, in my opinion, uh, in my experience, can be the representation of everything from a blood sugar imbalance mm-hmm. to a very real, you know, signal about a wrong relationship in your life. Uh, to, you know, some exposure that you're having in your household on a daily basis that essentially your body, mind, and spirit are trying to alert you to. And if you ignore that and you choose the old story, right? You choose the path that says symptoms are bad. Let's do the best we can to get rid of them in any way possible. Then of course it makes sense to just buy into the quick fix, right? And buy into the, the, the option to get the symptoms managed and suppressed and really gone as, as, as best you can. But there's something so much greater, of course, in my perspective, if we work through this process of, uh, exploration and we just sort of take the opportunity for a reset, Uh, because when you engage a reset, you're looking at all of these different arenas. And of course I, I advocate for looking at them all at once, taking action in all the arenas at once in, in the space of one month of your life, you can experience a shift that will liberate you to such a new, um, you know, such a new version of, of your own life experience. So I, I find it really inspirational these days, but you could, Prove it to yourself, you know, that it's worth it in the space of a month. And Kelly, that's about a a paradigm shift then, right? Because it's not about a fix. It's about a a, a let's look and see, right? And ask why. Mm -hmm. And and a trust of oneself, right? Do Can you talk a little bit about the self-trust that we might need to do that? It's the hardest part. Mm -hmm. It's the hardest part. And, you know, it really is spiritual work in the end, um, to try and embrace this concept of trusting your body, trusting, you know, a process, um, trusting a journey as not being self-evident at the beginning and, you know, trusting the universe or God or whatever it is that you feel you can connect to that is beyond your, you know, quasi purposeless life. You know, one of my favorite philosophers, um, is Alan Watts. And he talks about how, you know, it's very unlikely to be the case that we are just flesh robots on a dead rock in the middle of nowhere. You know, there has to be more. And we, we feel and know that there's more. It's just that we have been told 
that our bodies are machines that break. You know, why would we trust them if that's what we've been told? You know, we've been told that symptoms are meaningless. Why would we embrace them if that's what we've been told? You know, and we've been told that it's pretty much every man for himself and that there's no real valor in suffering. Um, and that's, you know, that's, these are all things, like you said, that I think under this paradigm shift are being examined uh, to, to allow for a very different experience. And I really encourage my patients, and if anything, all that I really do for them is to hold a space for them to trust a process and just be in it, just be in it. Because suffering becomes, as you know, has been told for, uh, you know, since the beginning of ancient philosophy, you know, suffering ceases to be suffering once we you know, find meaning in it. And that's the, the, it's the meaning that you have to, you have to really identify for yourself personally. Yes. And that takes us into the fact that we need to take time and space. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you hold a container, you give them the space to do this because uh, generally speaking, our lives don't give us that opportunity. We need to actually carve it out. So that's where maybe some practical things start to come in. Like um, I work with a lot of, um, it seems to go both ends. It's either really busy working moms with the whole family. And then it's, uh, I have a lot of, um, uh, you know, lawyers, doctors, yes. people running corporations. Okay. So both ends of the spectrum there, the, the mom doing everything and then the really focused business person. And they don't, they, it's this, I don't have time. I, I can't take the time to do that. Um, and that's why I'm hoping that your message will be, help people to see how important it is. Um, just making that shift. Uh, of looking. And I think people are afraid sometimes what they might find. Do you run into that? Yes, I absolutely. I think that it, especially with, you know, the, the case reports that I put out and my discussion of my outcomes in my practice. I mean, listen, you got good reason <laughs> to have some trepidation yes. before embarking on this because everything can change for you. Literally everything. I mean, I, I sometimes half joke about the fact that I have about a 90% divorce rate from beginning to end of work with me in my clinical practice. And it's nothing I encourage. It's nothing I facilitate, but it's a, it's a function of having to reconcile and integrate all of the neglected parts of your life. Yeah. Once you begin your own self healing and you feel empowered to actually clean up your, your, your house figuratively, right? Yeah. So it's, it's so, so true that there could be a lot of resistance and that's why I don't love the words, I can't, I don't have time. I, I really believe in reclaiming agency and taking responsibility. And so I prefer, you know, that people actually be real with themselves and say, I don't want to, Right. <laughs> you know, I'm choosing not to, because then you still retain the option to have a different, you know, make a different choice in the future. And I am a fierce and passionate believer in choice and the power of commitment. Because without that, you know, what's the point? You know, no wonder you feel disconnected and disturbed by your existence if you feel that you don't have um, the power to make a choice in your own life uh, for change. You know, that may be a big part of the problem itself. So, you know, I always say, here is the roadmap. You know, I, I have a ton of free content online. I have, you know, um, written a book about it with a 30 day protocol and I have an online companion course and community. This is the roadmap yeah. in my opinion, um, you know, tested and validated. And when you are ready, the tools are here, but readiness is about a real, real commitment. And the only ingredient there is choice. It's really the only piece that's necessary. Yeah. And this is why it takes different people, different amounts of time to go through this journey. Um, yes. I get people say, well, well, how long is it going to take me? Like, well, actually, let me jump right in here with Kelly's program. I want to tell you it's called the Vital Mind Reset Program. It's a 44-day program, and I will have a link to that in the show notes and on our website. But even people who go through your program – 
it's again planting seeds it's preparing the soil all these things take time something's going to grow very differently in the environment where i live than the environment where you live and just yes. like that it is with us as people and how fertile is our soil for change um so i when people come it, it's even if you go through a 44 day program that is just going to be setting the stage for you and your journey. And it may take different people different amounts of time. And But they get anxious about it or, or depressed. They get down on themselves. Um, so I'm hoping that everybody heard Kelly talk about that and um, that you can begin to trust your own process. I remember back uh, in the day when people talked more about depression. Um, I, I had anxiety, but people talked about uh, depression. And I had a friend who was a therapist said, who said, if, if there's something wrong, and you can't fix it, of course, you would feel depressed. And like light bulbs went off for me, because yes. it is about the change. And um, you can add me to, I didn't see you personally, but I, uh, my, my marriage ended after 26 years. And uh, my journey through my anxiety brought me to a whole new place in my life. Everything That's changed. And everything. sometimes your family and partners aren't moving along with you. And it's just. I bet, I bet you don't regret it, though. No, right? I, no I, 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 not at all. Not at all. This is exactly the journey I needed. Yes. And I needed yeah. all of it. I needed the beginning exactly. of it, the middle of it, and the, the right. final pieces of it. Yes. And now I'm on another piece of leg of my journey in life. Um, but I, I think we can't be afraid of that. And I, um, I, I think people are afraid to look sometimes. It doesn't feel comfortable. Can you give us some tips on how to start that journey of opening up some space? Because they may even need to do that before they took your program or... or oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the first 10 days of the program are just about mindset, just marinating you in a very different way of thinking about what's possible. And, you know, what's interesting is I'm by nature a very impatient person and very um, results oriented, very outcomes focused. And it's just part of like my old self. I am working on shedding and I haven't quite, haven't quite accomplished that yet, but it serves, I think my patients and it serves my um, advocacies because I have actually, you know, again and again and again witnessed that, you know, you can trash your body, you can be in all sorts of wrong circumstances for decades of your life as an, you know, as an adult, and then you can commit, really commit to literally one month of, of change to your lifestyle, and you can feel like a different person on the end of the other months. I mean, again, I've started to um, video document um, some of my cases and patients who have literally had dramatic revolutionary changes, very sick women um, in the space of one to two months. So the body is an extremely forgiving organism. And once your mind is aligned with what you believe to be possible, then it's it's like you know, there's no stopping you. And the changes can happen very quickly. But I am a believer in comprehensive change. So, you know, the program is very basic. It consists of dietary change. But again, it's a strict month. Do the month when you're ready to really, really do the month. Do yourself that favor because it's one month of your adult life and you deserve it. You deserve to generate the data and learn about yourself in the ways that you can through a month of strict control of cause and effect. So it's the diet. It's three minutes of meditation. I am a Kundalini yoga teacher and practitioner. So I feel very passionately about this branch of um, ancient meditation. Uh, it's extremely simple. It's easy to commit to. It's three minutes a day. Um, I ask, you know, people to start to look at their products and conscious consumerism. So are you filtering your water? You know, what are you use, using as a moisturizer? Basic stuff. What are you cleaning your clothes with? Uh, because it contributes to the burden that, you know, that we're trying to drain that bucket. Um, I ask, you know, people to look towards communities. So the kinds of communities, you know, that you, you've created is a massive part of the healing process. Um, and then, you know, sometimes there are higher level, 
you know, support needed around detoxification like coffee enemas and um, tapering psychiatric medications. But whether my patients are on medications or looking to avoid them, the initial month-long protocol is exactly the same. And so one thing I'll leave, you know, your listeners with is if you haven't already, and I know, you know, you all are um, nutrition conscious folks, uh, but if you haven't already thought about making a simple change, like a change to your breakfast, it can often be like a really fun experiment uh, to change up your breakfast and see how it feels to start your day with a different kind of informational transaction, you know, with, with your food. And so I am... Um, I have, um, and I, I can uh, give you this link, but I have a, a video and a recipe for a smoothie that a lot of my patients really like and enjoy, and it's not complicated. You don't need any special, you know, protein mixes or anything like that. It's all kitchen foods. Um, it happens to be a very high natural fat um, smoothie with a focus on that over even um leafy greens or, you know, maybe perhaps more typical ingredients. And I find that it, it, in the space of even a week, can contribute really significantly to healing a lot of blood sugar imbalance, which in my perspective can drive a lot of what we call anxiety, yeah. um, is just this, this, these episodes of reactive hypoglycemia. So sometimes even just experimenting with that one small change before you're ready to commit to a month-long um, experiment can give you that needed incentive. Absolutely. So get on over to Kelly's brilliant uh, website. It is kellybroganmd.com. And everything is there, the videos, the recipes. It's a wonderful site. So get on over there, get the book, A Mind of Your Own. You won't be disappointed. It's written uh, particularly with women in mind, but men in my groups are reading it too. So Kelly Brogan, MD, you are such a dear for coming on, and I thank you so much for taking time with us. Oh, it was a total pleasure. Thank you for what you do and for holding this space. It's really a, a gift to the community, so I appreciate it as well. Thank you, Kelly. Aloha. That's it for today's show. But before I read today's quote, remember, if you want more of what's offered here and more personal guidance, you might be ready for our group coaching membership program. It's a deeper dive into what you learn on these episodes. Each month, you'll receive two anxiety clearing skill sheets, two live group coaching calls, and a secret Facebook group for coach and community support all month long. So if you're ready for more, go to anxietycoachespodcast.com slash group dash coaching and join in today. I'd love to see you in the group. And now for today's quote. Keeping your body healthy is an expression of gratitude to the whole cosmos, the trees, the clouds, everything. And that's from Thich Nhat Hanh. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. So until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com.